Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. We're off to a roaring start in 2024. And today we're going to be talking about uncertainty. It's not always something that sits very well with us, but uncertainty is definitely a part of life. Uh, uncertainty is a state of mind that is brought on when we don't know something about the future. But it's different than ignorance. It's not just not knowing, because when we feel uncertain, we have just enough information to know that there's a lot of information we don't have, right? So for example, we know climate change is real, but we don't know about it in enough detail to know whether we should buy sandbags for our house or move the house or move away entirely. Um, epidemiologists are fully confident that we're gonna have future epidemics like COVID, but we don't know what form that's gonna take or what the pathogen will be. There's so much data and information out there, but there's almost too much of it. It's all right there at our fingertips and it's ambiguous. It's not clear, always clear, and it can have many interpretations. So the defining characteristic of uncertainty is that unlike risk, which you can measure, Uncertainty is unquantifiable. You can't measure it. What we do know, though, for certain, is that it can leave, leave us deeply uncomfortable. It's not a very pleasant feeling. But there are opportunities for growth and wisdom um, that can be offered by being unsure about things. Um, a neuroscientist, Joseph Cable of University of Pennsylvania, he said, Uncertainty shakes you out of your complacency and makes you more attuned to new information. It plays a role in setting, in setting up the brain to learn. So think of the unease you may feel uh, first day in a new school or your, you know, all of a sudden you encounter a detour when you're driving and it takes a long, long time to get somewhere. Um, when you experience something new, um, or unexpected, stress hormones and chemicals flood the brain. And at that moment, this, there's this mismatch between what were your old expectations and what is now the new reality. You don't know, and a state of mind linked to stress symptoms, such as dilated pupils, sweaty skin, um, and higher cortisol, occurs um, because we are all built to crave answers and not knowing unsettles us. But this is precisely why we benefit um, from it. Because when we confront something new and powerful, the brain, these brain, the brain signals that occur boost the mind's openness to new information. And it fires up our brain circuits and um, that control focus. So it helps us focus more and pay more attention. So the not knowing something interrupts our current plan of action and it calls upon brain systems that are now needed to update um, that now not relevant information into something to translate the world um, and the new thing at a given time. So that uncertainty, it, it's good for our brains. It helps us focus. It pulls us into the present and makes us pay attention and look around. And by embracing the challenge of uncertainty, we become alive to new possibilities as well. So or more because we don't know something is gonna happen. So we can think, oh, well, maybe this will happen. So we're more likely to be curious too. And interestingly, the ability to accept the unknown also factors into our well-being and positive emotions. So those who are more willing to accept it generally have a higher sense of well-being. So I'm going to share with you a Taoist story that is about accepting the fact that life will always be uncertain and that we are best off by accepting that. I'm getting a better place with the light here. The story is about an old farmer and he had worked his crops for many years. One day his horse ran away 
Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. They said, such bad luck. And the farmer replied, maybe. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it three other wild horses. How wonderful, the neighbors exclaimed. And the old man replied, maybe. The following day, the farmer's son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, and he was thrown off and broke his leg. The neighbors again came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Maybe, answered the farmer. The day after, military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army. Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. The neighbors congratulated the farmer on how well things had turned out. And the farmer said, maybe. So we're quick to label certain situations as bad if we dislike something and good if we like it. But this kind of either or, this binary thinking, it doesn't always serve us very well in the realities of life. To accept uncertainty takes us out of that binary thinking, just like with the farmer. Um, and it also opens up an entire world of possibilities. Like I said before, if you don't, if you you know things are uncertain, well, that leaves room for good things, like all these wonderful things to happen. Um, on a simpler level, you can think about, think of it as when something bad happens, well, maybe it will lead to something wonderful in the end. But settling into uncertainty more deeply, it's acknowledging that everything changes. The universe is ever changing, right? This that saying that the only thing, um, the only thing that's constant is that everything changes. Um, and the farmer in the story, he accepts this, he understands this. He's not dividing his life into good and bad events, but just accepting it as it is, whatever comes his way, he's accepting it saying, oh, this is what I have right now. Things are gonna change, things are gonna be different. I don't know what, how, in what ways, but this is what I have right now and I'll deal with it. Um, it's as if the life he, he's accepting all of the life that he is living and knowing that within those uncertainties, that's where possibilities are found. So I have a couple of quotes I wanted to share with you. Um, this first one, I'll, I'll, it's a little bit, it's a little dense, but it's uh, Maria Rilke. And this one's a little bit, a little bit longer. And this was in um, letters to a young poet that she wrote. Be patient towards all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. So there's questions. It's like books that you can't read yet, but that you know you're gonna be able to read at some point. And so you know those answers. Um, don't look to try to ever answer everything because there's things that, um, that, that don't have answers. And the point is to live everything. Live the question now. So that's like, you know, le leaning into that uncertainty, into those questions. Live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. So I'm gonna read it again, just because it's kind of a lot in there. Be patient towards all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a very foreign tongue. Do not seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. At some point to live, and the point is to live everything. So like the farmer, he's just accepting life and living everything that life brings him. Live the question now. Perhaps you will then gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. And another one, another quote, uh, trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming. When nothing is certain, anything is possible. And finally, a Swiss philosopher, Henry Frederick Emile said, uncertainty is the refuge of hope. 
So things may not be certain, but you could always hold on to that hope. And that is found in the uncertainty. That is it for today. I hope you have a great week.